outside of the YouTube world. It is I, your conquistador, Javi Air, and joining me today on the Literary League of Heroes is D Hyde. What's going on, Mr. D Hyde? Not Thanks a whole lot. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. And it's nice to, uh, yeah, focus on comics a little bit. Been watching way too much wrestling this last week. Hey, yeah. wrestling. Because it's just been so much happening. Yeah, uh, the whole wrestling world is is uh, throwing people by storm right now. Yeah. There are a lot of different networks that are getting involved, and it can be good and bad. Even yeah. Billy Corgan from the Smashing Pumpkins is putting out the National Wrestling Alliance NWA show on YouTube now. So that's the thing that's happening. That's something that we're going to definitely need to talk about uh, in well, another show or something because I need I to know more about that. Yeah. How about this, Javi? Well, let's do it here. Let's start it up on the Oprah Boys. Oprah Boys? Book club. Uh, <laughs> we will be doing an episode of the Wrestle Line. You and I, either separately or together or whatever, will watch that NWA Power Show. And then we'll do a review on my Wrestle Line show on my channel. And that's right. Before we before we go off on our tangents. Well, that's not a tangent. That's my plug. My plug is <laughs> out of the way. We're doing that this weekend. Uh, that's right. You check us out um, on that wrestling show for sure. Um, but as Derek was mentioning, this is the Conquistadors Oprah Boys Book Club. Oprah Boys? That's right. We are continuing our book club. Thank you, everybody in the Conquistador chat for hanging out. We have Life with Two YouTubers. Stroll. Hey. Lady Fantastic. What's going on? Lady Fantastic, I saw her on Robert, uh, the comic book G-Spot, Galvin, his live, sh live stream show. His, he does like a late night stream. He goes into like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning sometimes. But wow, Lady Fantastic has some real positive things to say. That was really, really cool. YouTube is 90, 90 MF Comics. Yeah. Um, I put the link to 90MF Comics channel on the description to this video today. Go check out his channel if you guys aren't subbed up. I mean, I'm sure everybody in the Conquistador comic book chat is subbed up to everybody. But special uh, channel that I wanted to shout out, 90MF Comics. Thank you, Chad, for everything that you do, brother. Mm -hmm. God bless. And he is mentioning that AEW has been so good. That's a conversation for another day, Chad. <laughs> Thomas Wayne, what's going on, man? Haven't seen you in a while. Flash pointing himself into the chat. What's going on, Thomas Wayne? <laughs> and highly a comic bro. Oprah going on. Boys. Oprah boys. Miss you, man. Mm. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. And Lady Fantastic is ready for some Garth Ennis drama. That is right. On the Conquistador Book Club, we are talking about The Punisher. Uh, this is the 2000 to 2001 series by Marvel, published under the Marvel Knights imprint, written by Garth Ennis, drawn by Steve Dillon, and Jimmy Palmiotti on the inks, and Jimmy Tim Palms on the inks. That's right, Jimmy Palms. Um, and on the covers, Tim Bradstreet. Mm -hmm. That's so important. Those covers this, are so is, this is my favorite cover to the series. It's a 12-issue maxi series. This is issue number six. And here we have Frank pointing his guns right mm -hmm. at your face. <laughs> we have, of course, the skull theme in the background, the skull. The skulls, I should say, have been a theme in these covers. Oh, yeah. Ongoing theme. Yeah. It's a pretty subtle theme, I'd say. but <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this oh, is... Oh, actually, sorry to interrupt, but it's funny because I have it on my book here, unobscured by all the graphics, and the cover's a lot more crazy than it looks there. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, like, without the graphics, you can really see the design behind yeah. it. All. Yeah, like, yeah, sorry I had to interrupt for that, but I just noticed that now, and this is infinitely, this is beautiful. <laughs> like, I love this. There you go. Yeah, it's almost like a sun 
being yeah. made out of the skulls in the back. Yeah, and yeah. like on oh, like the skull rising up, kind of yeah. like like yeah, it's the skull or whatever. You yeah. Can, yeah, yeah. This is so. This is way more skulled out than the other one. <laughs> <laughs> this is nuts. I love this. Yeah. This might be. I got. I got to go through it at the end, but this might be my favorite cover so far. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, the covers are very, very, very nice, uh, very well done. But I don't know, just this one, I think it's the colors or something about it that yeah. just, I think it's the two guns just pointing at you. I think that's really oh, yeah. what it is. But um, yeah. I like the, the shadow on his face as well. You can't really see his eyes. But yeah, yeah. And all the weird concentric circle of skulls, like, I don't know, it's great. Yeah. It's, that's a really that's a really awesome one. I didn't even notice that till just now. Issue number six. So we're gonna be doing a deep dive review into issue number six of this twelve issue maxi series. So we're kind of like right smack dab in the middle right now. Last episode, um, or last episode, I should say, we kind of talked about how the first five issues were exposition. They were all leading up to uh, building the plot. So now this issue number six, we get more action, which is, you know, of course, what we love to see in a Punisher book. Oh, yeah. And there's there's no more, like, plot that we need to know. It's all getting to, like, the nitty-gritty, and it's all about Frank going after... Um, the criminal in this book is Ma Nucci and the Nucci uh, Krang family. That's right. But as we see, there's kind of like a twist or turn of events in this book. Um, it, it, it kind of spawned off of the ending of issue number five, where Ma Nucci put a $10 million hit on the Punisher. That's a crazy amount of money. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's insanity. But she, you know, she got her arms and legs ripped off by polar bears. So she's pretty angry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's willing to do whatever it takes to bring down the Punisher. And literally whatever. She has yeah. all the goons out in New York City pretty much going out and looking for where Frank is or trying to find Frank. And, of course, Frank is the Punisher. He's... He's untraceable, unstoppable, mysterious, yeah. and unstoppable. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma, Ma, <laughs> <laughs> Ma's bitter. Yeah, she's yeah, real she bitter. Is. But I mean, imagine being, imagine having your arms severed and legs severed by an angry polar bear or yeah. a group, a pack of angry polar bears. She would be a little bit bitter. Yeah. <laughs> she deserved it. Life with two YouTubers is saying. <laughs> yeah, she has not been a fan of Ma this whole time. <laughs> no, and we need to get to the way that she, uh, that uh, they do her makeup, but that's going to be in a, in a late. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a yeah. few issues because it does get answered. I promise you, and it's one of the fun. It's a fun. It's Gar Fennis is one of the dumbest human beings on the planet, but he's so smart and funny and such an amazing writer because it's the dumbest joke. <laughs> you, could, you think you could go for it? Such a weird. Yeah. yeah. Um. I. Not much humor in this. In this one. This was um issue number six was kind of like a a quicker read than the rest. Yeah. Um. And not much humor. Like I said, it brings back the action and brings back the Punisher. Um. Back in the action of things. Yeah. Um, there yeah. is a joke. In here, I remember just in my rereading of it, there's like a single joke. Yeah, <laughs> like because the rest of it's it's all pretty like kind of serious, and it's just it's yeah, it's very linear. It's not they're not trying to make any kind of jokes. They're just going along because they're trying to bust out. This is the middle. This is a hundred percent the midpoint. This yeah. is the a big event going on here in the middle, and then it's gonna build its way up to the end because it's just constant. So confident. <laughs> so yeah, Ma is fuming right now. And like I said, last issue, she put out the $10 million hit on the Punisher and someone came through and they actually 
live across the street from the Punisher and they were able to, you know, see him coming home one day after after an attack and he's like dragging himself on the street, trailing blood. And the guy even mentions how um, he stumbled, like Punisher stumbles on the on the street a couple times before making it making it to the front door of his apartment building. And apparently, this guy works at a uh, an adult bookstore. Yeah, an adult bookstore. Yeah, I think that's where the joke comes in, where the guy Manucci's associate, he's like, I I, I only went in there to make a phone call. Yeah. <laughs> Like That's right, true. you dirty sleaze bag. <laughs> yeah. Because. Oh yeah, that's right. This is a yeah. Ma and her goons are always so good. Because there's a thing like, oh, when did you see it? Oh, ten days, ten days ago. Hey. Like the guy saying, "Oh, I saw it ten days ago," and then one of Ma's goons go, ten days ago." Hey, that, that would have been the night of the zoo thing. Remember? Right, it's uh, tying, like, tying well, everything together. Well, I hardly likely to forget that it was ten days ago that I got mauled. <laughs> like, oh <laughs> man, yeah, ten minutes, yeah, man. Um, yeah. so yeah, sorry, continue. No, I didn't know if you were gonna say anything. Oh, but no, you done. Definitely a buildup. This is definitely the beginning to the rising action. So like issues one through five, we had like all that exposition, you know, all that kind of just building ourselves up. And now we're, you know, getting to that rising action towards that climax. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, this guy gives Manucci a tip on to where she could find the Punisher. And of course, Manucci being the professional that she is she has to make sure that his information is correct so she makes the guy and like two of her associates go scope out the building make sure that everything is legit make sure that his information is correct and yeah. she says you know what your information is good but you you didn't kill the punisher so it's not worth 10 million dollars i'll give you 10 grand and then we'll go from there exactly yeah, yeah. So it it's turned, very matter of fact, like 10 millions for the guy who kills him. Your information's worth 10,000. Yeah. And his money and figure out this guy's lying. Kill him. <laughs> because him. that's, you know, yeah. as long as she can get closer to the Punisher or as long as she can get any information, like I said, she's, she's willing to do whatever. Oh, yeah. 10,000, 10 million. At this point, it does mean it does have a difference to her, but... She, she just wants to get to her end goal. And it's funny, the I guess, like the duality of it all, because as Ma Nucci is planning and she's getting this information and they're scoping out the, the building to, to confirm their information, Frank himself is rec recovered. He's recovered from his injuries. Um, back at the zoo and he even tell he even says it himself he says it's been you know what, what x amount of time it's been 10 days it's been a week it's time to go it's time to get back out on the streets yeah. oh yeah he's got he like yeah he's gotten too comfortable it's no good he's gotten too, so comfortable to the point exactly that exact brand he calls Dave, he calls spacker dave spacker dave on the first go Spacker Dave goes to correct him. He's like, nah, hey, you got it, Mr. Smith, dude. Thanks. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Frank um, has been here for, uh, you know, I, I I would say a month, maybe maybe a couple months. And mm -hmm. he's getting comfortable with the scene. He's getting comfortable with the scenario. And God help him. he actually likes these people. Right. Exactly. He, he doesn't want to get anybody involved. But at the same time, I can only imagine what he's thinking like he needs to get what he was originally after done. He needs to get Ma. He needs to go after Ma Nucci. He needs to end this. Yeah. It's been taking too long. So he's, you know, has his um, armory. He has all his weapons set up and he's going to go out, go back out on the streets and 
as soon as he leaves the building, the people who are scoping him out see him and, you know, they get that confirmation. They, they get that confirmation that that is the Punisher. He does live in this apartment building. You know, yeah. the, the guy in the middle, this dirty looking guy right here yeah. gets his $10,000 and my Nucci's face right there. Yeah. She's just like, get him. What are you doing? Right. Yeah. And, uh, Got to point out Sleazebag's face when the money's right in front of him. Like, just that unbridled joy. Crazy, right? He's so happy. He's getting his sleazy little hands on all that money. He's snitching out on Frank. That's no good. And, you know, we talked about this in past episodes. Steve Dillon, the way that he can draw expressions and the even in one panel he draws three different expressions you know the guy that's handing him the money the guy that's receiving the money and the guy on the phone it's all three different just classic poses very very nicely drawn for sure and manucci she gets the information that she needs mm -hmm. and she lets the orders out man she says bring them down on him like a pack of dogs she says get everybody on the streets get everybody to where you're at let's bring down the punisher yeah and let's do it let's get them and that's it you know like nuff said like after that you don't really need any expose or any plot or anything like that we get right down to the nitty-gritty Oh, yeah, and the awesome thing about them just going, every, like, Soap and Molly are still in the car waiting at the, at the, at the, oh, my God, at the Nucci compound. I can't believe I forgot Nucci. <laughs> how long have you been reading this, and how many times do they fucking say Nucci? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Anyway. Nucci. They're at the Nucci compound, and they're just waiting, and, uh, so decides to play a little game. I love this stupid thing that he decides to do. It's like he just says Jaws out of nowhere. She's like, hmm? And then he explains that it's a game, that he says a movie title, and then they got to say the movie title. Then she has to say another movie title that begins with the last letter, like Jaws into um, the Spanish prisoners and so forth. And then it'd be R. Yeah, so, yeah. a waiting game. You know, they're, exactly. they're uh, scoping out my, the Nucci compound and they're waiting for things to happen. And they're, you know, so yeah, such a dupe. He's such a doofus. Yeah, athlete. he's such a dope, bro. He's Absolutely. like, I love yeah. him. I love that character so much. Yeah. Like, he gets to shine in other things. But yeah, and that takes up a whole page, which is just how beautiful Gar Garfenis is amazing. Like he just takes the time to have a whole conversation about a dumb movie game. And All right, I gotta I gotta interrupt you for a little bit because yeah. because the comic collector is in the Conquistador comic book chat and he's saying he's never read a Punisher book. And well, the one. Hey, but this is what this is what Oprah Boy's book club yeah. is all about. This is what the Conquistador comic book book club is all about because I actually never read a Garth Ennis book. And Derek Hyde came up with the idea, Mr. D. Hyde himself. Yes. And he wanted to start up this kind of community for talking about books and introducing books, especially ones that others haven't read. And dude, you like highly, highly, highly recommended this book. Oh, yeah. Not only was Garth, not only was Garth Ennis writing it, Steve Dillon drawing it, but it was a Punisher book, and Punisher is one of your favorite heroes, anti-heroes. Yeah, like this book, I've literally like I've said this before on the show, and I'll probably end up saying it again, but I read this in like middle school sitting on the floor of Barnes and Noble and this made me go oh oh this is what comic books are oh these can be like this and then it just kind of went away for a while I didn't pay attention to who wrote it I didn't pay attention to a damn thing and then you know I just kind of found it found it I'm like oh this art style looks familiar and oh oh this is that this is that amazing oh my god and then now we're here right years later because of this book I think it's that good 
Yeah, and uh, you know, book clubs, they they you know, there's a whole lot of different book clubs out there, some of them that focus on the major books, you know, like the best selling books, the most popular books. We we focus on good stories, good any art, good thing. Any good thing. It can be indie, it could be DC, it could be Marvel. We just so happen to go with this 12 issue maxi series, The Punisher, Welcome Back Frank. Um, as our first kind of like uh, premiere kickoff uh, show for Oprah Boys Book Club. Oprah Boys? The premiere series, uh, if you will. Yeah. But yeah, no, definitely DC, indie, Marvel, anything that's good. It can be popular or like Derek said, it can be something that he read, you know, X amount of years sitting yeah. down at Barnes and Nobles and something that he knew that was good and that, you you want to revisit yeah it's and an it's, important thing because i feel yeah. like yeah it's an important book to me and i feel like it's just perfect it's a perfect punisher story and it's been great so far there are other better ones yeah. for other reasons it's a perfect one yeah it's been great so far and i've been really really enjoying it i've read um not as much punisher as i should well, i don't want to say as i should but i don't yeah, you know i, mean, I, I have yeah, yeah, exactly. I've read more Punisher than I should, so don't worry. <laughs> you know, about it. Yeah. Punisher was never, uh, you know, somebody who was like super interesting to me. Right. I, I always, it. I always had that stigma, like, oh, he doesn't have powers. Oh, right. you know, no powers. That's you know, how yeah. crazy can his stories get? But doesn't matter. The story's good. The writing is good. It's good in its setting, you know. Yeah. It brings me back to New York City and all those, you know, shenanigans that go on over there. And him not having any powers and being just pretty much a psychotic Vietnam vet is what kind of got me into it. It's like, oh, he's in this world, but that's really all he is. All right, cool. And Daredevil and Spider Man are all pissed off at him that he keeps. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. Yeah, but no, this is what the uh, Oprah Boys Book Club is all about. If you guys haven't read these, these, uh, this book, this uh, Punisher series, I highly, highly recommend it. D Hyde, he highly recommends it. Go check it out. It's a 12 issue maxi series. Go check it out online if you can digitally, or if you get can get your hands on the single issues, go ahead and try and do that. There's a omnibus, a hardcover that's out as well. And you can catch up on the previous episodes and you can uh, stay tuned for future episodes as we keep doing some more deep dive reviews. And probably when we get to like the second to last, you know, like issue 10, issue 11, then we'll be picking a new title for the next segment of Oprah Boys Book Club. And feel free, feel free to drop us a line and let us know. A any recommendations? We're open to any, any old thing. Yeah, for sure. Join yeah. the Conquistador Oprah Boys Book Club. Hmm. Uh, Hialeah had to go, so we'll just say shout out to or shout out to Hialeah. Thank you for hanging out. He yeah. has a stream coming up at nine o'clock where he's going to spoil the Joker movie. So check it out. <laughs> That's not a hard thing to do. I think the Joker movie spoiled itself like a rotten egg. Uh, yeah, we. I'm sure they'll be talking. I know, I know. I just wanted to say that. And negative. I know. I just uh, wanted to say that. I Good haven't seen the Joker movie yet, <laughs> so I'll I'll be in the chat. You know, probably low volume. You know, keeping it low. But um, yeah, Joker movie. Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin. Like the sound of a sword being drawn. Yeah. I gotcha. Super cool. Thank you, everybody in Conquistador Comic Book Chat. We're going to keep continuing and rolling along with our deep dive review of issue number six. Welcome back, Frank, the Punisher. Um, so, yeah, we're in the action. <laughs> yeah. Getting to it now. Uh, I'll just pull up this page because this is what everybody wants to really see. Yeah, I agree. This is the splash page of the Punisher. The 
call has been made. The order has been made by Manucci. Yeah. The streets of New York are filled with goons looking for the Punisher now that they know of his location. And they all roll up on him on surprise. He has no idea what's about to happen. And he has to do something. So he has a, I guess you can call it a bomb. It's two pounds of plastique. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a bomb. It's totally a bomb. It's yeah. like it's supposed to be like a, a, a tripwire kind of mine that you set. And then it's supposed to explode. Like when they trip a wire and like mine goes off in their face. It's like a claymore, I believe. Yeah, it's like a, I don't know, I don't want to say homemade, but it's definitely um, or something like, like a trip. Yeah, like a trip, like he has a, like a trigger to it. He can uh, like trigger the mechanism and it blows up this 700 ball bearings. Yeah. And so you imagine, work. and if you don't know what ball bearings are, it's those like little metal plastic, uh, metal yeah. plastic balls. Yeah, it's like BBs, but, um, you know, you, you roll them on the floor so pe people, uh, you know, so, like, yeah. like slip an over them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, give, me one, yeah. give me one second. Yeah, man. Sorry. Uh, my computer became unplugged and it is going to die. Oh, no. We got to save the power. Yep. We got yeah. OBBC. We got Bake the Snake in the chat. Thanks for hanging out, man. Thanks for coming in, man. So, yeah, um, he throws this tripwire bomb grenade inside one of the cars of the goons it blows up creates a mini distraction for him to kind of get this little bit of a surprise on the goons and here starts the like this exuberantly dark poetic writing like some oh. tough guy, James Elroy, beautiful. Like, it's weird. I love it. I love it so much. You want to read it off for us? Yeah, sure. Why not? Links disintegrate. Bolts clank back and forth behind a thudding roar. Brass rains on the sidewalk. The 60 rattles out its song. <laughs> right. It's like very, um, very poetic very these this like inner monologue of uh the punisher and man this splash page of yeah him just holding the 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 bullets on one hand holding the gun on the other the skull is popping through the middle amazing man he continues on to mention like his time in vietnam and how his time in vietnam was cut too short Oh, yeah, it all still ties together to it, too. It's it's all so good. Yeah, and he's just raining down bullets on this squad of Bonucci's goons that have just rolled up on him. I'm not going to show off all the deaths that he's causing, but yeah, it's yeah, it's in the 10s. It's in the 15s. It's, it's up there. And one of the guys, one of the goons actually has a – is this an RPG, man? I don't know what this is. Yeah, that's a rock launcher. <laughs> and he gets shot in the head, and then he just blasts the rocket. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oprah, boys, we got immortal Biggie Shack in the Conquistador. Oh, Biggie. Yeah. Hey, man, you got to check out uh, D High's channel, Big Biggie Shack. He's doing some good, good wrestling talks he, he was he was definitely there for one of the episodes and i know he was there for the unboxing i believe yeah and if you ever need a guest on the mega power hour i'm sure d hyde is available he yeah. knows i mean i'm sure i'm no. sure he doesn't know like 60s wrestling but he knows his modern 90s wrestling for sure i'm getting boned up on like 80s and 90s yeah yeah 80s was a uh, blind spot that i've kind of opened up a little more but yeah i'm free whenever man no press the punisher yeah oh yeah punisher now he's just going around murking up everybody until he's getting shot he's getting he's getting like exploded at he's gone through everything at this point yeah he he runs out of bullets 
for his um for his assault rifle and you know another common theme in in this series is what can punisher do with his limited arsenal you know yeah he, if he's running out of guns if he's running out of bullets and these guys have rpgs and you know they're busting out all this crazy uh, weaponry on him and he just has his two hands a knife and a pistol you know just that's all he really needs yeah and and it's such a good thing on that on on one of the, the second to last page he has yeah he's just getting shot in the chest yeah uh, over, and over again by some one goon who's got the drop on him he's just blasting him and that is such a like it's such a gut wrenching like a emotional i don't want to say emotional but it's such a um, i don't know man that part hit home with me i i really really dug that part you know we're always saying and you're always telling me how the punisher is unstoppable force of nature yeah, he doesn't her. have he doesn't have superpowers but he doesn't need superpowers because through some sort of supernatural force, have it be divinity or what have you, or just psychoticness, the Punisher perseveres. Yeah. And he's able to, I guess you can say, have a stronger threshold of pain than most. But yeah, man, this is what Derek Hyde was talking about here, where... The Punisher is taking out goons one by one, and then all of a sudden you hear this, or you uh, you're reading, and as you're reading, you read you're, here. You, you you're here. you're looking and you're and you're reading at the same time, right? Com that's what you do with comics. <laughs> <laughs> so you're seeing the Punisher be this badass, take guys down one by one, one by one, one by one. You know they can't touch him. And then all of a sudden you get to this middle panel and you read this. Yeah. Kevlar couldn't stop that one. <laughs> and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> or that. He says, or that, as a second shot. As a second shot hits him. So that's one, two, and then we have, mm -hmm. all right then, all right then, little man with a big gun. Three shots. Three more <laughs> shots. So that's five right there. And then look at Punisher's face. That's all you are. He doesn't... Hey, like, look at that yeah. ferocity, man, like that. Uh, yeah. That's, to that's uh, total Frank face. It's perfect. Uh, I love it. Oh, man. And there's so much... The definitive Punisher face. Yeah, and like, for lack of a better word, there's so much power behind this. You know, we're saying he doesn't have superpowers, but this is powerful, man. This is, this is gritty. This is a man doing and taking, like, you know, just taking all this pain just to get what he needs to get done. Snap some dick into... <laughs> <laughs> and that that confidence you know that's all you are and of course it's is all in his head you know he doesn't need to be saying this to the guy yeah. the, you know he's already intimidating the crap out of this guy oh yeah <laughs> like yeah what's more intimidating than shooting a guy five times and him not stopping yeah granted he has kevlar but you know he mentioned it Ke kevlar didn't stop that one you know yeah, there's pretty close shots mm -hmm. and his Kevlar's already been like all all messed up all right. right and here in these two middle panels these two horizontal panels he's mm. shooting him point blank yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and Shoot, then yeah. Yeah. do you have the next page queued up I have the next page queued up. I know we got some uh, conversations going on in the chat. We had 84 hop in here, man. I know 84 is doing, he's hosting. He's the one that's hosting the Joker uh, review show tonight. 
the movie review show tonight of Joaquin Phoenix, the Joker. Featuring on the panel, highly a comic bro, Los, and a fourth exciting member that I am forgetting about, but check it out. Zen World hopped in here. What's going on, Zen World? Awesome name, awesome Man. icon. Thanks for ha uh, for hanging out. For the Zen of Frank Castle. Yeah. The namaste of Frank. <laughs> so, yeah, man, Frank just took five shots to the chest. Three of them were point blank, and he has not stopped giving up. He has not given up yet. He has not stopped. And we get to this next page where the Punisher reaches the gentleman enough where he can get his hands on his head and Punisher doesn't need weapons. His hands are weapons enough. And I'm sure if his hands were tied behind his back, he'd still be able to come up with something. And kills a gentleman and falls down on the floor himself as well. And this very uh, savage grace. Oh yeah, it's, it's just goes. Yeah, just walks up and cracks. As you could see, the perfect K R A K. Crack. This oh. panel though, that's just both of them falling. It's just so. Yeah. It's vicious, man. Uh, you don't know. Of course, this is issue number six, and as this was coming out. You didn't know that this was going to be a 12 issue max series. At least I don't think you. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure, I'm not sure. yeah, I'm sure Garth Ennis uh, had his, you know, tricks up his sleeve. But, you know, this was coming out and you're reading this. And this is the last page of the book, guys. Yeah, this is it. This is the last page of the book. And the Punisher has just been shot five times. And if you want to do this monologue voice that you do so well, D. Oh, sorry, I put the book down. I oh. have to read it off the thing. Oh, I, I could get close. We're not on video. God turns the sound off, then the lights, any second. Now. Yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of like this um, wrapping everything up, how we had the the song of the six, uh, what was it? The, the, the song of the 69, was it? I, I Yeah, I'm, I'm very, very bad with guns, so. Yeah, same. The 60, the 60 rattles out his song, you know, as he's um high and mighty on this splash page where he's creating all this destruction, creating all this chaos, all this cacophony, speaking about this um this uh, noise and this song being roared out by the 60 and by the by the destruction that he's causing and then ending it with this uh kind of just juxtaposition where he's saying god turns the sound off then the lights just making sure 84 you mean i sound like rorschach when I was doing the Frank Castle voice or all the time, because that I need to know. <laughs> that I need to know. I think he meant when you were doing the voice. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> and of course we have this, like the last panel of the issue is just black, just darkness. As his vision is getting blurry and blurry and blurry and he's kind of knocking into an unconsciousness he sees the destruction that he just caused with all the cars all the dead goons yeah and Tons of goons. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and you know darkness and that kicks off issue number seven mm -hmm. that's a nice nice cover as well a uh, super man these tim bradstreet on these covers is so good man 
And he's, I know he did um, a lot of Punisher covers, not just the 12 issues. Oh, no, he did yeah. other stuff for Marvel Knights and Max and all over the place. Yeah. So. Like Art Van is like cover, bo cover man. Cover yeah. boy? Cover man. Cover boy? Yeah. So we just talked about in this episode, Welcome Back, Frank, issue number six. It was the beginning to the rising action. Beginning of the end. Right. If you, you know, as they say, the beginning of the end. It is, you know, right in the middle point of this uh, storyline, this 12 issue maxi series. Um, we had the Punisher getting back into what he does best going after the crime family, going after the criminals, going after the goons. And this great, great, um, like this serious battle se sequence between the Punisher and the goons. And like, yeah, like he's squaring up, him taking off guard too, which is not something you see happen often to Frankie Castle. Right, right. Not at all. Super good stuff, issue number six. Uh, beginning of that rising action. I can't wait to do a deep dive review on issue number seven. And after issue number seven, we just have four more issues to go. Mm -hmm. So once we get to about issue number 10 or 11, I think around issue number 10 would be a good point to introduce a new book for the next series of Oprah Boys Book Club. Oprah Boys, Oprah Boys the Conquistador Comic Book Book Club. So if you guys have any recommendations, let us know on the comments for this video. But of course, next week and every Thursday, next week at eight o'clock, Oprah Boys Book Club will be back on the Conquistador channel Mm -hmm. Our comic book review, or our comic book book club, I should say. Yeah, but yeah, it's a book club. And next week we will be doing issue number seven of the 2000 to 2001 Punisher series. Welcome back, Frank, by Garth Ennis, Steve Dillon, Jimmy Palmiotti. So if you guys have not read this series, <coughs> comic collector. <laughs> yeah get on it get on it thank you guys everybody in the conquistador comic book chat for hanging out thank you so much hide i know yeah. that earlier you plugged the Not a matter of the, way, baby. the the battle royale show that you want to do uh not oh, yeah. battle royale but uh the wrestling talk yeah, show yeah. We're good. yeah talking about the one thing oh billy corgan Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins has a new wrestling promotion out. That's a YouTube that has has an hour long YouTube show out now, and I'm very curious about that. And me and Javi, that's right, Javi, who's not who likes wrestling, but he does he's not familiar with it. We'll watch it. We'll talk about it. We'll dissect it. We'll go through. It. Not even dissect. We'll talk about it. It's wrestling. And um, any comic book stuff coming up? Um, should, I, I gotta. I don't know. Uh, more, uh, more of the world according to Frank. We got to do a, a review show. Um, we got to do Jimmy Olsen uh, issue number three, That's right. and Superman Year One issue number two. That's right. All so right, I'm if in. you guys are reading new comic book days, we are. Or right. if you guys are reading new comic books, we will be doing um, new comic book day reviews on D Heights channel. Yes, we will. That is a thing we did. It was a uh, Oprah Boys Book Club special. And now it will be its own feature. Sweet, man. Awesome. Thank you so much, D-High, for hanging out. Thank you, man. Pleasure's all mine. That's awesome, man. Awesome. And check, a, check us out, the Conquistadorks. Um, we have a stream coming up on Sunday, Silver Age Sundays. And catch us here every Thursday where we do our comic book book club. Oprah Boys Book Club. Next Thursday, issue number seven. Welcome back, Frank, the Punisher series. Thank you, D Hyde. Thank you, everybody in the Conquistador Comic Book Chat. 
Have a great night.